After all the turmoil and extreme bloodbath of the past year, the cryptocurrency industry is more than ready for a fresh start in 2023, one which would hopefully be devoid of more billion-dollar collapses and massive price declines. However, recent events show that that future might not be coming anytime soon. We are less than 10 days into the new year and the headlines are already as crazy as they were during some of the craziest moments in 2022. In this video, we are going to examine some of those headlines and their impact on the overall digital assets industry. Is 2023 already shaping up to be a worse year for cryptocurrency? We hope to have the answer to this very important question by the end of the video. Without further ado, let's dive right in. The first headline on our radar is the developing story slash drama between cryptocurrency exchange Gemini and Digital Currency Group, the parent company of crypto lender Genesis. On November 16, Genesis Global Capital announced that its lending unit was pausing withdrawals and new loan originations. It affirmed that the decision made in response to extreme market dislocation and loss of industry confidence caused by the FTX implosion would not impact the firm's trading and custody businesses. Shortly after, Jimmy Nay, the Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss operated cryptocurrency exchange, revealed that customers on the platform's EARN program will not be able to withdraw their funds until Genesis resolves its problems. Here is an excerpt from Jimmy Nay's announcement. We are aware that Genesis Global Capital, the lending partner of the EARN program, has paused withdrawals and will not be able to meet customer redemptions within the service level agreement SLA of five business days. We are working with the Genesis team to help customers redeem their funds from the EARN program as quickly as possible. We will provide more information in the coming days. That was almost two months ago, but customers are still being denied withdrawals according to the information on the Gemini EARN updates page. On January 2, Cameron Winklevoss, Gemini co-founder, decided to take things a step further by penning an open letter to Barry Silbert, the chief executive of Genesis' parent company, DCG. In his letter, Winklevoss revealed it had been 47 days since Genesis paused withdrawals, including the $900 million it owes to the Gemini Earn program. The open letter reads, Barry today marks 47 days since Genesis halted withdrawals. I am writing on behalf of more than 340,000 Earn users who are looking for answers. These users aren't just numbers on a spreadsheet. They are real people. A single mom who lent her son's education money to you, a father who lent his son's bar mitzvah money to you, and a husband and wife who lent their life saving to you. For six weeks, we have done everything we can to engage with you in good faith and collaborative manner in order to reach a consensual resolution for you to pay back the $900 million that you owe while helping you preserve your business. However, it is becoming clear that you have been engaging in bad faith stall tactics. In his letter, Winklevoss accuses Silbert of hiding in his ivory tower behind his lawyers and investment bankers, waiting for everything to disappear magically. He further states that DCGO's Genesis approximately $1.675 billion, a part of which belongs to Gemini earned customers. He concludes the open letter by urging Silbert to publicly commit to working together to solve the problem by January 8, 2023. In response to the open letter, Silbert stated that Winklevoss' accusation that DCG borrowed money from its wholly owned subsidiary is false. Here is his tweet. DCG did not borrow $1.6 to $75 billion from Genesis. DCG has never missed an interest payment to Genesis and is current on all outstanding loans. The next loan maturity is May 2023. And here is Winklevoss' response to his tweet. There you go again. Stop trying to pretend that you and DCG are innocent bystanders and had nothing to do with creating this mess. How does DCG owe Genesis $1.675 billion if it didn't borrow the money? Two crypto billionaires slumming it out on Twitter while customers look on helplessly as something no one wanted to see in 2023. We had our fair share of crypto billionaire Twitter fights in 2022. Plus, Genesis and DCG's fall could negatively impact Grayscale Investments, DCG's digital asset management company. Grayscale controls the world's largest Bitcoin fund with approximately 630,000 Bitcoin, representing 3.28% of all Bitcoin in circulation. It also owns $189 million worth of Ether Classic, $5.7 million worth of Zen, and 2.53 and 2.52% of Zcash and Ether. If Grayscale is forced to liquidate some of the assets to cover Genesis creditors, we could very well have another multi-billion dollar collapse on our hands. In addition to the drama with Jimmy Nang, two major headlines about DCG and Genesis have made rounds this week, showing the extent of the damage in the Barry Silver controlled crypto empire. On Thursday, Genesis announced another round of layoffs. The crypto lender will be cutting off 30% of its staff just four months after a 20% workforce reduction announced in August last year. 
According to reports, much of Genesis' troubles can be traced to three eras capital. It took a $2.4 billion hit when the crypto hedge fund failed to meet margin calls last year. Genesis is also known to be a major lender to Sam Bankman-Fried's Alameda Research. On Friday, DCG also announced it was closing down a wealth management division called HQ, which reportedly had over $3.5 billion in assets. Before we move on to other major headlines, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Recent reports show DCG and Genesis are not the only crypto firms announcing massive layoffs. Crypto-focused bank Silvergate has also announced a 40% workforce reduction after its shares fell by over 40%. Earlier in the week, Silvergate Capital reported a massive decline in its fourth-quarter digital currency-related assets. According to reports, U.S. prosecutors seized collapsed crypto exchange FTX accounts held at Silvergate to the tune of $143 million. In its preliminary earnings report, Silvergate seems to blame FTX's collapse for an $8 billion drop in customer deposits. The crypto-focused banks went from $11.9 billion in September to $3.8 billion by the end of the fourth quarter of 2022. Since the FTX collapse, Silvergate has seen a total of 69% decline in the value of its shares. This is another domino the crypto industry doesn't want to fall in 2023. In other news, crypto exchange Huobi has announced a 20% reduction in its workforce. Though Justin Sun, founder of Tron and Huobi's advisor, tried to deny the news, a spokesperson for the exchange has confirmed the staff cuts, stating that the exchange plans to maintain a very lean team going forward. There are also reports from Hubi staff that Justin Sun has tried to dissolve the company while trying to assure the public that all is well. Using fake Twitter accounts, some Hubi staff have expressed concerns that Sun is trying to rug pull the exchange's employees. One such tweet, written in Chinese, even speculates that Hubi's official trading volume and Merkle Tree proof of reserves are fake. Meanwhile, regulators and prosecutors, especially in the United States, have been more focused on the cryptocurrency industry in 2023. On January 5, New York Attorney General Letitia James announced a lawsuit against Alex Mashinsky, the co-founder and former chief executive of bankrupt crypto lending company Celsius. The lawsuit accuses Mashinsky and Celsius of defrauding hundreds of thousands of investors, including over 26,000 New York residents, out of billions of dollars worth of crypto assets. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SDC, has intervened in the asset purchase agreement between bankrupt crypto firm Voyager and Binance U.S., the U.S. arm of popular crypto exchange Binance. On Wednesday, the regulator filed a limited objection to the purchase agreement, stating that it was investigating whether Voyager and other parties violated the anti-fraud provisions of the U.S. federal securities law. It also questioned the ability of Binance U.S. to consummate a transaction of such magnitude, valued at $1.022 billion, and the nature of the exchange's business operations if it pulls through with the acquisition. From Indonesia to the European Union, Russia, and Israel, many regulators around the world are working on various forms of cryptocurrency regulation to bring the industry, which they say has gone rogue, under control. According to reports, Indonesia will create a national crypto exchange in 2023, the exchange will see regulatory powers over the crypto industry shift from the Commodities to Securities Authority. While commenting on the shift of authority, the head of the country's financing and risk management said, Crypto assets have become investment and financial instruments, so they need to be regulated on an equal basis with other financial and investment instruments. With all the drama surrounding the cryptocurrency industry only a few days until the new year, how do you think crypto assets will perform in 2023? Do you expect more volatility or less volatility compared to 2022? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Also, ensure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications so you never miss any of our regular uploads. Thanks for watching.